it may become the act of this church every Sunday to find out the person you're standing near, how they have been during the week. Someone needs your smile. Someone needs your love. And that's what we are here for. For the next several reasonable minutes, I want to speak on what I call the knockdown for a rising up. Did you hear me? Many, many times before God lifts you high, he knocks you down first. I don't know why, so I want to speak on the subject, the knocking down for a lifting up. Tell your neighbor, the knocking down for a lifting up. Be seated. Daniel chapter 10. Lift your Bible if you have one this morning. Don't come to church with newspaper. Come with your Bible. Lift it up say, I have my Bible. Amen. Daniel chapter 10. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel whose name was called Bethsaida. And the thing was true. But the time appointed was long. How can you imagine Almighty God show you something real? It's like God bringing out $1,000 says, Son, I heard you I need. I heard you have need of one thousand dollars i have it and you stretch your hand to pick it and say hold on how will you feel if the good things you dreamt about the thing that god showed you is going to use you to do accomplishing life the lives of nations for you to reach god told you i'm going to use you to go to australia 10 years ago and he said get ready pack your things get ready for australia and you tell your wife on my way to i'm on my way now to australia the lord told me last night go to australia go to sydney conduct a seminar i'm going to stand by you you are going to heal many people the lord will use you to change lives and you are dancing and jumping you tell your wife you tell your children then you come to church in the morning and say bishop the Lord said I should go to Australia and I know you are going to send me. I said, Don, I didn't say God didn't say so, but you are not going. You are going to say, I rebuke you. You wouldn't say it out, but you rebuke him. But many times when you rebuke God, he refused to rebuke. <laughs> Is anybody hearing what I'm saying this morning? Several times. I tried to say, God, that's not you, so I bind the devil. He said, when you finish binding, see me. <laughs> I don't know why. But here is what the Bible is saying to you and I. A thing was revealed. A thing was made known to Daniel. And the thing was true. But. True. But. How do you have endurance for but? How patient are you when you are anxious to get married and any brother you say good morning to say don't tempt me? How patient are you when you are in hurry to have baby and you get married and the doctor diagnoses you to have fibrous and say to you your pregnancy is in doubt or you say I'm pregnant and you are very anxious you start to buy things for your baby now you go to the gynecologist and say lie down they examine you and say you have no baby how do you handle those times of expectation that fall short of good things what do you feel when your ears are tuned to hear good news 
and the person you ask good news give you bad news how do you handle your time and God's time do you mean that God can tell lie the answer is no does it mean that God doesn't know what he's telling you the answer is no my question to you this morning can God deceive a man my answer to you is no but what happens if your time and his time doesn't agree? <sighs> the thing was true, but the time appointed was not yet. That's one of the things that we have no patience for. The time appointed, not yet. How do you deal with appointment not yet? How do you deal with you find you're looking for a home to buy and your friend comes to you and say, Doctor, I just found three homes near my home. They are selling them auction. The house is worth two million, but they want to sell it for hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And then you go to your bank in anxiousness and the bank says you are not credit worthy. How do you feel when you think after going around the building you've already made up this is my room, this is for my wife, this is for my son, this is my daughter, this is the guest room, this is going to be oh Lord, oh Lord, Mahakasolo Boroya. This is the Lord's doing. After you have bragged and your swollen spirit is punctured how do you handle that aspect of your life do you still say all things work together for good are you using your time to time God or you are working on God's timing I have now known from 37 years of knowing the Lord that many times my time and his time is not the same I'm anxious, he's not anxious. I'm in hurry, he's the God of peace. A brother came to me two years ago, doctor said, Papa, Papa, I need prayer. I said, what do you need prayer for? He said, I need the gift of patience. I said, when? He said, now. <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. What gift do you need? Patience, when? Do you understand that? If you need patience, you don't need it now. <laughs> do you understand English? <laughs> I need prayer for patience. When do you want the prayer? Now. You've already failed the test. Because if you need that patience, you say it and go. That's patience. But if you want it now, you don't need patience. You're asking for the gift of anxiety. Look at verse 2. And I will tell you as the message continues how to handle that the time appointed was long and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of great river, which is Hidekel, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose leons were guided with fine gold of offer. His body also was like the bell, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms as feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Verse 7. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision. But a great quaking fell upon them, 
so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision and there remained no strength in me for my commonliness was turned into me into corruption. I retained no strength. How do you feel when you want to stand and you see yourself on the floor? This is not devil dealing with Daniel. This is God. I saw what God showed me. I saw what God said. But what God showed me knocked me down. What God asked me to do knocked me down. I got a knockdown for my lifting. What do you do when God says rise and he push you down? Daniel said, I sat there. Everyone that journeyed with me all fled. How do you feel when very many turn to I alone? How do you feel when the man you told all your secrets sell you out? How do you feel when your confidence becomes your betrayer? How do you feel when the person that says, go ahead, see you fall and say, I told you you are going to fall. What happened when the person you lean on give way? To you women, how will you feel after three years of preparing for wedding, next week will be the wedding day. And on Thursday, the man says, the Lord told me not to. Do you still say, to God be the glory? Do you still remember that the Bible said, not one hair will pull out of your head without noticing God? Do you remind yourself that the step of a righteous man is ordered by God? How do you handle disappointment? Daniel said, the Lord knocked me down. And all who journeyed with me fled. How do you handle, let us pray. And then you meet with your committee members. Ministers, this way, all of you come here. Quick, quick, quick. Pastor, don't leave your team here. Tomorrow and next tomorrow, no food, no water, no eating, no traveling, no movement. Come closer. I'm talking now as Archbishop. Presbyters, tomorrow, this is illustration. No food, <laughs> no water, no going to a job. We must all be here at 7 a.m. for prayer. We want to see the move of God in this ministry. Yes or no? Yes. Everybody, yes or no? Yes. Congregation, yes or no? Yes. What happened if those we discussed and they say, Pastor announced, and then you suddenly when we close, not you, but this is illustration. <laughs> I heard, we heard. We heard what he said. But does that mean that we have nothing to do? No. You going to do that? You going to take part? Coming here by 6 o'clock? No. For the rest of the week? You going nowhere? No. And not me. Are you going to do that? Are you going to take them? Aren't you busy? Don't you have anywhere to go? Don't you have anything to do? You understand? You are my number two man, okay? Yeah. You preach your position of what I preach for right. You tell them what to do, all right? Yeah. We're not going to do it. No, going to. Don't, don't you have where to go? Don't you have anywhere to go? Don't you have where to go? You think choir should be singing for the whole of the week? What's my microphone here? Just a minute. What happened if the person you told what God told you? Now take the microphone and preach opposite. And then suddenly tomorrow morning you are here by six o'clock. And all of them, only two came. The rest of you, bye bye. Go, go back to your seat. <laughs> what happened when you expected 30 people and two came 
And the two that came said, we just came to take excuse from you. We have somewhere we are going. You know, before you made your announcement, I, I already planned my life out. You didn't give me notice. So, will you also go away? You have somewhere to go? You're not going? What of you? Going to be right here. Going to be here? Yes. That's surprising. <laughs> Where are the rest people? Don't follow the crowd. You, you're not going to follow the crowd? Well, you're going to stay with me? They had someplace else to go. They have somewhere else to go. But you have to follow me to follow the Lord? Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, do you know that with these two, we can do more than with the crowd? God is looking for willing hearts. God is looking for few who will say like Esther. If I perish, I perish. God is looking for few like Ruth. Your God shall be my God. Your people shall be my people. This congregation is very important but god doesn't use all to win all did anybody hear what i'm saying i told my wife four o'clock this morning i said one of the trouble you and i have i couldn't just tell her she has i have to say we <laughs> but i know i was talking to her One of the trouble two of us have. It's not me and you, it's only you, but you of us have. <laughs> have you ever talked like that? You know that you are saying the real thing, but you don't know how to put it so she's not offended. <laughs> Is that you try to struggle with unwilling people. Many times the people you call your number two are not even number ten. Many times the people you think you're going to lean on on the day of trouble have no back. So many times the people you think this is natural. Don't you think when trouble come we stand by you are looking for who will stand by them. It's natural. Daniel said I fell down. The earth quakes. Your business earth may quake. Your marriage earth may quake. Your family earth may quake. When your ground quake and everyone you look up to flee from you. What do you do? Do you because your said to be relied on man fled you flee from your vision should you abort your dream because you thought i was going to stand by you and i fled from you daniel said i alone i saw the vision i knew what god said when they all fled, I remained on the ground. I lost my strength, but I didn't lose my God. Everybody shout hallelujah. Every man may flee from you. Every friend may turn their back. He has promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The ground may shake so much that you have no leg to stand. But the God that gave you the vision will not cancel the vision. Somebody shout hallelujah. I don't know what is quaking around you. I don't know what is pushing you down. I know if God gives you a knockdown, he's going to give you a lifting up. It may be a financial knockdown. It may be a marriage knockdown. It may be a business knockdown. It may be a family knockdown. 
It may be a, a relationship knocked down. But if for any reason God allows you to be knocked down, he's getting ready to lift you up. I lost my strength. The strength in me. Now you're talking of friend fled from you. That's what Daniel is saying. He said, not only my friend left me, my strength left me. What happened to you when you are not enough for yourself? Is anybody hearing me this morning? The day you will know that the second name to this world is called trouble. And the day you will know that salvation does not eliminate trials. The fact that you are baptized with the Holy Ghost does not send devil to hell. Jesus didn't say kill the devil, he said cast him out. I hope you understand the difference. If you cast him out from Atlanta, he may go to Chicago, but he's still there. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Jesus didn't kill the devil, he cast him out. That's why he's still able to operate. But once you know that heaven and earth may pass away, but God and his word will remain the same. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at the next verse here. I lost my strength. Come on, pastor. I fell on the ground. Yet I heard a voice, verse 9, of his words. And when I heard the voice of his word, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. How do you, do you think they are hearing what I'm saying? If you want to stand and you see yourself flat, not, not only knock down, but knock down, knock out. Did you hear me? If everything you thought, oh God, is going to work, didn't work. What happened when hallelujah turned to sorrelujah? <laughs> what do you do when praise the Lord turned to sorrelujah? Painful luya. Disappointment luya. What happened when your friends begin to laugh at your cause? And they say, we know God didn't send you. You sent yourself. Do you pass out or you rise up? What did David do when David found himself in this situation? David said, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. What did Isaiah say? Isaiah said, when you see yourself in that situation, rise and shine. What did Job say? Job 22, 29, when they say, cast down, then thou shalt say, there's a lifting up. What did the Shunammite woman say? When the son died, one and only son, she said, all is well. All is well. My baby is well. My husband is well. My marriage is well. But the baby died. All is well. What do you do? The day you want to travel and rain for. And you have no money for transportation. Do you say, how I wish I wasn't born? Job said, I wish I wasn't conceived. And if I was conceived, I should have been aborted. And if I'm not aborted, woe is the day he was born. But at the end of his story, he said, when the must have tried me, I will comfort like gold. 
Do you know there's a shining waiting for your ugly moments? Somebody say hallelujah. There's that period you have to go through fire to achieve your life dream. There is that time in your life no matter how holy you are holiness does not push satan to hell holiness makes you a better person say amen, amen. holiness makes you live longer say amen. amen holiness make you an instrument in the hand of god say amen. amen but your righteousness does not kill the devil he knocked me down i heard a voice I heard a voice. Verse 10. Read with me loud. Come on, pastors. And behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hand. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee. And stand upright for unto thee I am now sent and when he had spoken this word unto me I stood trembling yeah. they say lift him for a knockdown they say hand not far away they say hand willing to pick you and I up there's a hand ready to take us out of our dead drum. It doesn't matter how long, how many hours, how many days. Daniel said three weeks plus, I was on the ground. When I lost my strength, when I lost my energy, when my neighbors fled, a voice came to me. I'm saying to you today, and whatever you may hear me, if all you know to do have been done and is not good enough, stay where God will meet you. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Don't run from your goal. Just say lift him for it, knock down. If man knock you down, God will not degrade for you. If money knock you down, God will not bury you. I can still hear God say to you, rise and shine. Your light is come. Your light is come. Daniel said, a hand touched me. When the hand touched me, he told me, get up. Every child of God here this morning, get up. If you're a man or a woman of God, get up. Say with me loud, I'm getting up. I'm Say it louder. I'm Say one more time. I'm Make it true. I am getting up. I'm Move your fist. I'm getting up. I'm, I'm moving on. I'm, moving on. I'm, getting up. I'm getting up. I'm moving on. I'm, moving on. I'm getting up. Come on, gentlemen. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Watch us. Say to me, get up. Yeah. I didn't hear you. Yeah. Say to me, move on. Move on. Knock down. Yeah. Lift up. Move on. Say, move on. Say, move on. Move on. Move on. Move on. Don't, don't build, don't build condominium in the valley of trouble. Walk through all your valleys. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no
You don't need sympathizers. You don't need sorry I heard what happened. Get up. Get up. Say it again. And do what? Say it again. Time. How many of you would get up and move on? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah! Let me read to you what will happen if you get up and move on. See what the Bible says will happen to you. Verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. Say with me from now, I will not be afraid. For from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, the words we are heard, and I'm come for thy words. Say with me, in my knockdown time, God will hear me and lift me up. Now look at me, everybody. Look at me. Don't move one inch. Don't do any other thing. Do you understand what you are saying? That only trial can bring you triumph. And only obstacle will bring you miracles. Many of you think the man who knock you, the quick that knock you down will pick you up. Anyone that was kind enough to knock you down will not be kind enough to raise you up. <laughs> and if I want to tell you the truth, any man that hates you enough to knock you down cannot love you to pick you up. Amen. Say, I hear, you. I hear you. Several times, as a young preacher, Dr. Petrie, I thought those who knocked me down would come and pick me up. I waited so long and none of them came <laughs> until I found out that the Lord liveth and blessed be the let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord and blessed be. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord who is for me to be. you from your knockdown. The knockout and the knockdown for the lifting up. If God permits you to fall, he will stand by you to rise. How many can say amen to that? How many of you want God to raise you up? Usher, shut all the doors for me. I want to pray the prayer of faith. Usher, shut all the doors. Let's give the Holy Spirit five minutes for the battle that we can win on our knees than with our mouth. The hand touched me. The Lord spoke to me. He said, from the day you set your heart, I heard you. But the prince of Persia stood these 21 days. When he had spoken unto me, verse 15, the words unto me, I set my face toward the ground and I became dumb. From shouting to dumbness. All because of the vision. Don, did you hear that? Be 
Vision can knock you down. Vision can take your strength. Vision can make you dumb. But stay by your vision. Stay by what God showed you. Stay by the revelation of God. A lifting is coming nearby. A hand is coming nearby. Somebody shout hallelujah. It doesn't matter how long you stay on the ground. The same power that quake the ground. The same power that knock you down. God is going to use his own force to lift you up. The 16th verse says here, And behold, one like this similitude of the Son of Man touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spake and said unto him that stood before me, O oh my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. I am talking to you of reality. What God asks you to do that is impossible to men can almost kill you. But you will never die. I say you will never die. I say you will never die. The storm may take your roof. The storm may take your sheep. The storm may take your health. But the storm will not take your life. I see a lifting from your knockdown. Elijah said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. The ground may dry, but I hear a sound. God is about to speak to his church. Lazy people don't go far. Unwilling to endure don't go far. But they stand by God's. They stand up by God. Those who stand by God. Those who lean upon the Lord. The Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. <laughs> 17 verse. Look at the 17 verse. For now, for how can the servant of this my Lord talk with his? With this, my Lord. For as for me, straightway, there remain no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Then there came again and taught me one. If the first touch can do it, if the second touch can come, it's not the devil shaking you. It is the Lord. It's not your sin that brought your trial. The Bible did not say the test of your sin, the trial of your sin. He said the trial of your faith. Is yeah. anybody hearing what I'm saying this morning? <laughs> you think it was your sin that did that? It's your faith. It's a dream that is bigger than your expectation. God is, oh my God, my hokoso. <laughs> Pastor Don, you know what the Lord told me? He said, if you permit me to test you at the beginning, you will stand for a long time. <laughs> I do not want to ride a Mercedes as a boy and ride a bicycle as an adult. I'm so glad you didn't hear what I say. I prefer every trial that I have from God. Give it to me while I'm young. So when I'm old, I can cross my feet. I can say, I was young, but now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. No, he sits begging for bread. 
How many can say amen to that? Every trouble that God will give to you at 75 years old, may he give it to you when you are 25. Because the time of old age is a time of relaxation. People ask me in Nigeria every time, how are you able to handle criticism? I say, because I died. A dead man doesn't reply. Many of you are replying because you are not dead yet. Paul said, it's no longer I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. Somebody say, hallelujah. <laughs> he touched me another time. I lost my strength. But he brought his hand again. Then there came. Give me the microphone. Let him read it with American English. <laughs> Verse 18. Then there came again and touched me one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me. What did God do when he meet you on the floor? I say, what do God do when he meet you on the ground? You mean he doesn't press you and say, are you still living? What does he do? I say, what does God do? Then what does he say to you? Get up and do what? One more time, get up and get up and Perel, Bishop Perel, Bishop Adrian, every child of God, get up. Read me verse 19 in American language. And said, O man greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened. And he said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Everybody do this. Say, My Lord has strengthened me. Let me tell you three things to do. Don't reject knockdown. But don't die there. down move forward everyone who want to move forward just move forward a bit no matter how close move forward everybody who want God to give you strength to go forward move forward to tell God to change the situation don't come to the church to die come to the church and energize yourself don't be afraid of trial but don't die in your temptation Verse 20, from now, I will stand by you to fight for you. I will return again to fight for you. How many of you want God to fight your battle every time? It's true, I was knocked down this morning. But come back and see me in the evening. For whipping me and joy for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. Joy cometh 
in the morning. Joy cometh in the morning. Joy cometh in the morning. Joy cometh in the morning. Everybody said joy. I prophesy your days of tears are over. Your days of downcast is over. Lift your hand and say hallelujah. Lift your hands and say hallelujah. Keep your hand on top. I heard God so. Where there's a cast down, there's a lifting. Where the road close, there can be another road. Where there is sickness, there's healing. Where there's poverty, there's prosperity. And the Lord asked me to ask you, do you need my helping hand? How many of you need the helping hand of God? Reach your hand towards me. Daniel didn't say, the earth quaked again. Say, hand touch me. And I can see God lowering his hand to touch you wherever you are. Heavenly Father, I bow my knees on behalf of the bishop, the senior pastors, the presbytery, the youth ministry, every department of our ministry here and the global ministry here represented I bow my knees I stretch my hand to everyone yesterday is the last night of your knockdown I see God raise you up I see God raise you up I hear God say to you, go on, go on, don't let the dream die. You may faint and lose your strength, but the vision will not die. It may tarry, but it's going to come back. Holy Spirit, touch. 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 Holy Spirit, touch. Lose them and let them go. 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 Restore their dreams. Restore their vision. Renew their strength. Thank you, Lord. You told me if they ask you for help, you will do it. And I trust you that every sickness they brought here is killed. Every fear and doubt is gone. The Lord touched you for the second time. Raise you to energize you. Lift you up and put you on the way to God. And the dream shall not die. In Jesus name. Everybody say amen. amen.